One example for me, which is probably relevant to, to boys at Scotch um, right now is, is when we lost Head of the River. You know, we were a favourite crew to, to win. You know, we were a great team. We got along. We had some fantastic roles, but we lost. Um, we came second. Now, that was probably one of the best things for a 17-year-old's ego. The, the first thing I felt, uh, and I think this is, this is also really quite closely interrelated with how I felt about failure when I was younger. Um, and the, the first thing I thought was I was, I'd opened up the results on my own in a different room. I didn't want anyone else around. Um, and the first thing that I thought was um, what, the first thing I thought about was what are my parents gonna think? Um, and I think for, and, and in particular, uh, dad. So I, I have a, a amazing relationship with my folks. Um, but for a long time, uh, my my dad's approval in particular was really, really important to me. Um, and so for a long time, I actually think the way that I defined failure was not necessarily whether something was a failure or not, but whether it would be considered a failure in my parents' eyes. Be aware that if you fail at something, that doesn't make you a failure. And that's really important. You are not the outcome. So growing up, grew up on a farm, and that's sort of hand in glove with grit and resilience and having to sort of, you know, you're, ex you're exposed to things that other people aren't growing up. It's a bit tougher, it's longer to get to the front gate, let alone the nearest town. You know, there's the, the, the shops, you know, 40 kilometres away. So there's all these things that frame your life in a certain way where you've got to sort of go an extra mile just to do to do the basic things. Currently what I do, I'm back at home running a few small businesses in the Pilbara and uh, you know, I often say to people, um, a lot of people that are in my cohort from school and uni are in professional jobs now and they left home at 12 and they haven't been back. To me, grit is, is just, is literally putting your teeth together, clenching your teeth, just persisting that little bit further, delaying that gratification to to get close to that outcome i suppose the analogy is you know it's they, people say it's a journey but it's sort of like sweep, sweeping the floor you never you do it once but you it's never quite done you've always got to do it again so you know you can't just have persistence and grit for for five minutes and tell everyone about it it's sort of got to be something that's ingrained failure is framed in an interesting way in our society it's it's framed in a way which is so finite and ephemeral so you fail and that's it um I, I really i really define it in with with different terminology i'd like to define failure as more just a setback because it's just a timing thing so it's a setback in time um of achieving a certain goal uh so you just have to have another attempt and then you you can eventually have a breakthrough but it'll be down the road one of the great things about the Scotch community is that um, a lot of the families are really involved and invested in the success of the boys. Um, and that means they're really supportive and it means a lot of the families that send their boys here sacrifice a lot to give them that opportunity. But I think the flip side of that can also be the pressure. And, and I think a lot of the time that pressure is not even real. The, it's that, um, you know, if you ask most parents, they probably say that they just want the best for their kids um, and they want them to be the best that they can be. I know that's really, really cliche, but I think a lot of the time boys feel like, um, boys at Scotch feel like there's more pressure from their parents than, than there actually might be. The, the quintessential story of the boy that achieves everything at school and then and they say, oh, he peaked. Um, and um, that's not everyone, um, but you know, if success is reinforced in a way where um, people are doing it, you know, young guys are doing it because they're going to, you know, get that um, reinforcement from the community or, or society or wh whoever, and they're doing it for that reason and not for a deeper purpose, then, then that can be dangerous. But at the same time, if you've got purpose and drive 
and and you really know why you're doing something you, your reinforcement doesn't come from um from you know other people it's it, you have that in in a scorecard um think about say something simple like weightlifting you don't jump into uh, 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 the Olympics for weightlifting. You, you uh, train and train. In fact, for weightlifting, you train to a point of failure and that is the way you incrementally increase the way you reach your goals. And when I was at school, I, um, I was captain of debating um, and that was, I was really passionate about that. Um, and I had it in my head that I was gonna go into law. And that, so all of my preferences, both in Western Australia and, and um, interstate, all of them had law in them. So it was a law combination with commerce or with something else because it hadn't entered my head that I wouldn't get into law. Um, guess what? Uh, I, I missed out by, uh, by about, I think it was about one uh, TER, which is the same as ATAR point. Uh, and so that was uh, that was a pretty a pretty interesting moment for me when I got those results and went, oh no, this is I didn't I didn't even think that it was possible that this was going to happen. Um, that was certainly a, a pretty big failure for me. There's a couple of challenges that I had which are fairly fairly significant. They happened all at once, and that's that's generally what happens in life. Is it 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 sort of all tumbles down on you at the same time. So I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease at the start of 2019, and um, parents also had a business partner in uh, the, their cattle property. And right at, at the same time, a um, particular business partner decided that he was getting out. And uh, six weeks later, I lost 20 kilos and was diagnosed with Crohn's disease. So I spent all of last year in hospital, and had about 10 surgeries, and, and incredibly, um, it's an incredibly humbling disease is Crohn's. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy, uh, but as a young man, there's a lot of things that you go through with it that are, that you just you just don't want to go through as a young man. And having to rationalise those things is a very humbling exercise. And just when you think you're at your lowest and something comes along and hits you again, you've got to just face up to whatever it is and just look it in the eye and go, "Good, good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna." take on that challenge that you've given me and that's obviously the next step in the path to what it takes to to overcome this challenge uh, and in the end that persistence and through a number of setbacks we we're able to get the deal across the line and then I was able to get back to back to health but it was over an, a number of months and a number of trials and tribulations and a lot of a um, lot of stress but big thing for me was I knew why I was doing it and now when I look back on it retrospectively I know what I'm sort of capable of so that's the biggest thing about a challenge or a failure is you look back on it and you go actually I went beyond my limits so so your capacity in terms of your self-esteem and your self-confidence is a lot bigger because you know you're able to overcome these these things in music, you, you train, train really hard uh, and, and, and practice. And again, if you're not doing it often enough and if you're not doing it to the point where you muck up, then you know, you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough and lots of us demand incredible um, levels of performance from ourselves. Um, you should just be forgiving that you don't instantly reach that level of performance. You, you forgive yourself for making a mistake and take two breaths and then start back a little bit. Uh, um, ultimately though, that led me into uh, computer science at university, which led me into the IT industry, which, um, which I am so thankful that I am in now. Um, and I found a way within the IT industry to take um, and to really, I suppose the word I'd use is celebrate that skill set that I built um, in, in debating at school um, and turn that into something that I use every day in the role that I have in sales. Um, so I built, I built a, a body of expertise and knowledge around IT and then I combined that with the existing skill set that I have in a way that I didn't think was, you know, in, in a way that I hadn't considered doing. 
um, and all of that was the direct result of that one failure um, when, when I got my results. So it was an interesting outcome. Having a support network of my family, but also my close mates, I defined who my mates were. I've got five really close mates, and you know, I, def I defined who those mates were, and I told them that they were my close mates, and I made the right choice because those five people helped me out in unique but significant ways. You can't expect to roll into a, a thunderstorm and, and then go, oh, well, you know, I haven't actually been spending too much time with Sally and John and Harry and such, but you know, they're good mates and, and, and maybe you haven't done the right thing by them and then expect them to sort of come to your, to your aid. You, you've really got to build that trust, honesty and respect, you know, so it's rock solid and that's the same for your family. They're like those things that I say you can't buy. It is a failure if you get to the age of 70 and, and you don't have those relationships. They're just things you, you don't have. The, you've got to put the investment in now to have them because they're really, really important for getting, getting through those things. Science is, is built on the requirement to test and fail and test and fail. That is the scientific method. And, and you can apply that to almost everything. So judge your own success or, or failure by your own terms. Don't compare yourself to other, other kids. Um, improve on what you have, uh, what you've achieved before uh, and find that platform of failure as a as a way as a springboard as a way to dive off and and to go for the next success and the next improvement failure is is not something that you are ever it, it can't be um, failure is something that happens over you know a second or a minute or a week or a year but by definition it's contained so it's something that you can learn from and that you can overcome um, and, and that it, it won't ever best you.